Welcome to episode 3 of Travel Traveler Camping Journal, a production of Sam's Camping Videos on YouTube. Today I'm back at Forest Lakes, Arizona, and I'm at my favorite camping spot. But it is also in the middle of the monsoon season in Arizona. Will I get thunder and lightning and tons of rain? Will I be washed away from my campsite? Or will it be sunny and hot and dry? Well, I arrived at my campsite uh, around 11.30 and uh, I had to unhitch and just get to a point to where I could like, enter into the trailer and then uh, eat my lunch, which I bought already prepared. It was a salad from the grocery store yesterday. So what I gotta do next is I have to put up my pop-up uh, shelter and it's one that only one man can do. It's better if you have two, but it has instructions for one person to do. Uh, so, so I'm gonna do that next. Well, I just got done putting up my uh, my pop-up shelter there. I need to kind of like uh, tauten up the peak there in a few minutes, but uh, I did everything else around here, so uh, I'm tired. I'm gonna rest up for a little bit. I'm finally able to relax on my first day after a long drive and a good day's work in setting up camp. My belly is full and now it's time to relax by the campfire. I prefer nightfall. Twilight is now transitioning to the darkness of night. Yes, my favorite time of the day. Night while relaxing by a roaring campfire. Today was a good day.
been a long day for me today. It's Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. I left my house at 5 a.m. this morning to get up to my spot here. And it, it's the same camping spot that I came to in episode 2 of Travel Trailer Camping Journal. Today is episode 3 of that series. And I did an accomplishment today, and that was I finally got around to, and it's a rare event, I finally got around to putting up this pop-up shelter. I think I've only had it up like three times previously. I've owned it for like five years, maybe, or perhaps not that long, but it's been years. And I, I wanted to show you uh, earlier in the video, you didn't actually see uh, the entirety of it. Uh, it comes in a big roll away kind of bag with wheels on it, and it sits in the back of my truck when I transport it to campsites. And I went ahead and uh, uh, extended it out on the side here before I start showing you all the other actions I have to do to put up and and to prove yes you know one person can put up this large shelter this large canopy and also on my first day of being at a campsite you know there's a lot of work to be done uh, so I did it and I haven't had much time to relax until now I hope all of you have been enjoying my videos so far and uh, I thought I was gonna have more time to do them because I'm now retired I've been retired for about three months now and uh, I have another series on on my YouTube channel Sam's camping videos called Sam's Jeep packing and back in February when I produced one I mentioned, well, I had decided to retire, but also a major reason why was because I wanted to be close to my impending first grandchild to be born in July. Well, that grandchild has come. It had to come about three weeks early, <laughs> uh, but, but she came in late June instead of July. And so... This video is dedicated to Jalen and her mother, Kiara. It's been a, a humid day up here because, once again, you know, this is the monsoon season. And uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, Arizona, during the months of late June through like early September, and that's a a rainy season for us and what happens is a flow of warm moist air comes up from Mexico into our state and it collides with the dry air here and uh, it creates uh, vicious thunderstorms and where I'm camping at today is where these rainstorms are born they're born up here you know a geological feature known as the Mogollon Rim. It's a escarpment, essentially. And when the storms are born here, yes, it will rain a lot. And that was the reason why I had to get this this uh, this canopy up. Because in July and August, if I'm here, I need to have this thing up. Because uh, I, I cook, you know, outside, you know, a lot of my meals and uh, I want to sit out here I don't want to be stuck in the trailer um, so that was the first order of business you know today after I got myself squared away with the trailer was uh, I had to put up this canopy so that's a little meteorological uh, explanation of what the monsoon season is it's not like a monsoon like in India or Southeast Asia. Uh, the only characteristics that we share with that and that is uh, 
uh, moist air flowing in from another location essentially and that's Mexico and that goes on for about two months uh, and then it it subsides and then dissipates it's finally starting to cool down out here where I'm sitting at it's about 64 degrees it feels warmer than that because of the humidity and I'm out here later than I usually am because uh, in the other times of the year I'm already back in my trailer because it's uh, going on 8.30 right now. But I'm having a great time out here by the fire. I want to just sit back and just relax and enjoy my fire for a little bit longer. And then it'll be time to go back into the trailer. So until then... I'll talk to you later. Time to go to bed for the night in my travel trailer. But before I do so, I have to thoroughly douse my campfire. Never, never, ever leave a campfire undetended overnight. Thoroughly douse it with water as I'm doing here. Bonus coverage from Sam's Camp. We got some rain coming. It was very dark and gray, and I didn't know it was coming this way, but yeah, it is. It's been thundering up until the time I turned the camera on, of course. You should be able to hear that. The winds are picking up. Just caught the tail end of that big lightning strike. It was maybe a mile away from me, over in that direction. But it hasn't really poured rain yet. Just a little bit of sprinkling. And that's been it. We can't, it's not even enough to even get wet from. Well, the impending rain that I thought I was going to have here due to the monsoon season, even though you can hear thunder in the background behind me, appears to have fizzled out. So, unless something great happens, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, this coverage. It's Thursday. It's the next day after my last uh, segment of this video. And it's around uh, 1.13, I'm grilling my lunch, and it finally decided to start raining pretty good here. So here's an Arizona monsoon storm. Here it's coming down. I don't know if you can see it very well. The rain on the roof of my canopy. It is coming down pretty good right now. <laughs> you know, I gotta go back inside my trailer to, to button up some windows. It's really back at you. coming down here now. I'm under the canopy, and that's like right behind me on the campsite for the forest road. I hope you can hear me. It's pretty loud. It's thundering pretty loud around here right now. Well, I'm enjoying the rain under this canopy. Came back from the trailer, made sure everything was uh, buttoned up like it should. I went ahead and closed two windows on uh, the rain side, even though they appear to be not raining in, but I went and did it anyway. And I've got uh, another window that's on the other side of the trailer. I don't see no raindrops on that end, so once it passes over and turns around from the other way, then I'll have to close that. Well, yeah, this rain is... Cutting it up, as they say back home. So I'm just going to have to get back to 
what I'm grilling here is a couple of sausages to eat for my lunch. And then I'll get back to you later in the day. I had a couple of events on tap, but one of them may get washed out by this rain. I don't know yet. So, I'll talk to you then. Hello, it's uh, the next day, though you did get some rain coverage earlier in the day. It's around uh, 2 30 right now, and I showed you that rain shower we had with lots of thunder and lightning while I was making my lunch. Well, I ate my lunch, and now it looks like I can hopefully fly my new drone. So, let me show you that right now. And here is my new quadcopter drone that I was talking about earlier in the video. It's a Parrot Bebop 2. And it is a true drone and not just a toy quadcopter. It can fly autonomously if I create and load it a flight plan. And that makes it a drone then. I had wished I had bought this drone last year. It is fantastic. I got it about two and a half weeks ago, and as soon as I lifted it off, I had no issues. It didn't like go side to side, it hovered right in place. Unlike my other drone, uh, which I had used on previous jeep packing and camping trips, to where I had to do my best to prevent it from crashing. So let me tell you about some of the features here. Here is, is its battery and that's one of the important features that it has. It, it permits uh, up to 25 minutes flight time. Unlike uh, other drones and toy drones where it's like 5 to 8 minutes and that's what I was getting out of my other toy drone. Um, it has a, a 1080p digital stabilizing camera at the nose here. I've got the nose cap on it now. It shoots True HD as totally stable video. It is gorgeous video. I've, uh, I've taken quite a, a few clips with this drone. Uh, the only uh, downside about it, and I don't know why Parrot does this, but the uh, memory is internal, and there's only like seven gigabytes, you know, available. So you can't store the videos on and on on an SD card like you with, with like you can with other drones. Uh, it has to either be transferred the videos by Wi-Fi transfer, or by a cable to a computer. I use a cable to a computer because that's so much faster than a Wi-Fi transfer is. But other than that though, uh, there's not much uh, to not like about this drone. And at the beginning of this video you saw like a montage of this episode and the shots from above were taken by this bad boy right here. And you'll agree those were pretty good pictures. A pretty good video, excuse me, video not pictures. It can take pictures also. So what I was planning on doing today was to go down to a clearing down the forest road, do some uh, flights with this drone here. One of the things that I wanted to do was something that I can't do back home in a crowded neighborhood since its, its communication method between itself and its controller is through Wi-Fi. In an urban neighborhood, there's like tons of Wi-Fi signals and it shortens the range, the uh, connection range that you have with this. This drone has a feature to where if it gets out of contact with the controller, it will stop, hover, turn around, come back home. But on the flight plan, that's one way to get around that connection range issue is that the flight plan is loaded into the drone initially before the flight and it will continue 
to fly along its path uh, even if it's disconnected and then we'll come back if, if your last waypoint is is next to you and you've told it to land there that's a really cool feature but what I wanted to do was to extend the flight this time in a forest area which has no Wi-Fi signals except for me uh, back home I've been getting up to 285 meters distance going down the street about 20 to 30 meters high and, and then loses connection I've always had it on a flight plan so we just continued on and came back home and landed in my front yard like I told it to uh, but here I want to see if I can really get the advertised like 1.2 or 1.4 miles away now I am not going to push it that far in the wilderness but I want to see if I can at least double the range and let's get on down to the clearing put this drone to its paces I uh, got my drone out here in the field it's a uh, I had to go further down because where I wanted to go there's campers camping down there and I didn't want to be flying you know around them and rile them up so so here's our I'm around electrical towers so I hope that doesn't cause a problem with the with the range with the connection range between the drone and the sky controller so this first test will be I'm gonna like lift it up perhaps I'm not quite sure 10 to 20 meters around here I gotta stay away because I'm right in the middle of electrical towers and a tree line here so So I'm gonna like take it up here. I'm go forward a little bit here. Take it to the right there. Take it to the left. And I think I'm just gonna like let it. Okay, I'm at four meters, take a little bit higher here. Take it up to ten. Give it a real test. Move it over a little bit here. Alright. Okay. there there 
that was a pretty good run I don't recall how far it went but you saw how my drone went there so let's uh let's do some close quarters maneuvering here and do some rotations and things like that well I've still got battery juice here to do it <laughs> A little bit more. There we go. Let me walk up to him here. Land the bad boy. That was a totally awesome experience for me. I was actually flying a drone and not just controlling it from crashing all the time. That was fun. I hope you saw some pretty good video shots of me flying way, way far down that way. And I didn't really double my distance because I could barely see it in the sky. It was a good thing it was a overcast day uh, and I was able to see it, you know, against the sky. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even have flown it that far. But I think, well, it appeared that it went further in my, in my test of the range for the connection than it did in my neighborhood. Now after that I just flew it around just for fun and I got some video shots out of it too so that was great. So the Parrot Bebop 2 drone 
I would recommend, and that's my review of that product, I would recommend it for a beginner even, because from my experience using the smaller toy drones, they're just not stable enough, you know, to actually be able to learn how to fly one. I would have had even better videos to share with you since then. So if you look back at my earlier videos where I have aerial shots overhead and today's footage, there's no comparison. There isn't any comparison to the two. So I'm very excited about my new drone and I'm going to get perhaps years of enjoyment out of it. So I'm going to go back to my campsite now and I am going home tomorrow morning, but there is another segment uh, I want to share with you and that's with my dinner. I'm going to have a foil packed dinner, which I haven't had since about the first few months that I've owned my travel trailer back in 2008. Uh, but it, it was a real simple meal and I haven't had since. Now I'm not sure it, if I haven't had because I didn't like it. I just subconsciously never plucked it out of my recipe folder for camping. But I decided I would do this one and I would be honest about just what that recipe entails and how it tastes. So we'll go through that together later on in the late afternoon and the early evening. But until then, thank you for viewing my Fun with Drones part duh. That's French for two. See you back at the campsite. <laughs>My dinner tonight is going to be a tinfoil dinner and it's one of those classic camping foods that lots of people make. They just wrap it up in tinfoil and throw it on campfire coals or on a barbecue grill with briquettes or on a propane grill like I'm going to do. So mine is composed of two hamburger patties surrounded by some vegetables like carrots, potatoes, onion, sprinkle with my own seasonings and spray it all with that pan butter stuff so it don't stick on the foil when it's grilling on my propane barbecue grill. I've only had this once before and it was about the first few months I owned this trailer back in 2008-2009. And I haven't had it since and I don't know why, well I don't recall it was because I didn't like it or because I just never got around to it again. It's been sitting in my recipe folder for camping ever since. So I thought I'll pull it out because a lot of people who go camping they do tinfoil meals. So let me show you. What I've gone on ahead is I put uh, one hamburger patty in the middle of a large piece of aluminum foil. So I'm going to spray the top of this patty with some spray butter right around the foil. And now I'm just going to start surrounding it with various vegetables. First up is I'm putting baby carrots. The recipe says slice carrots, but hey, it's your camping trip. You can do whatever you want with it, all right? Important thing is when you put stuff in there, spray on top of them with the spray butter. Next up, I've got some, got some sliced onions. I didn't chop them, I kept them sliced. I'm not an artist, so I don't make wedding cakes. <laughs> Spray that with some butter. And then the final ingredient is some chunked up red potatoes surrounding it. And Try to keep the sharp edges away from where you'll be folding up the aluminum foil around. Next up is the uh, seasonings. So I'm going to use seasoning salt on mine. Put on there really good. Garlic salt. Be eating healthy I do back home. Put a little bit of pepper on there, which is something I don't normally do on the recipes. 
and this the recipe calls for it. So I'm going to wrap this up. This may take more than two aluminum foils here, I think. Let's do it really tight. <laughs> and I am going to use more than one. And put another layer on it for safekeeping. It's nice and tight. Alright, next up is I'm going to start my barbecue grill. So I'll meet you out there in a minute. Well, I have to start up this uh, propane grill with my striker. Hey, okay, start it. Set it down to about medium there, or medium high. Yep, he's working. And after that gets uh, warmed up on the inside, then I'll, I'll put the foil packet meal in there. Well, I think it's preheated enough here. So we're just gonna put this big packet on there. And uh, we've got like 40 minutes to go, so I'll be turning it over from time to time. Must be turned over so it evenly cooks. Well, it's been a few minutes later, about 10, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this foil meal over for the first time. Also, turns up to almost high. To make sure it cooks thoroughly. <laughs> Underneath this grill, it I noticed there was some melting of, of the tabletop. It's a portable uh, table that I got from Camping World like last year. And it said it could handle heat, but I had it up on high. So that was probably my bad. So if anyone can tell me, how do you protect like plastic or vinyl portable tables when you go camping from heat? When you've got like a a grill on top of them. Put them down in the comments below this video for me. I would like to really know. All right, so it's time to, to get this foil packet and take it back into the trailer. There it is. I'm going to enjoy eating this, I hope. Well, I the meal in, so let's break it open here and see how it looks. There. Give it a really good look here. There's the... Uh, the onions on top and the carrots, potatoes, and the hamburger is right there. Let's give this a try on my table. I'm going to dig into this now. So let me try one of these red potatoes chunks. I had a tin foil meal with ham a couple days ago and these were like hard as rocks. Let's try it. Oh, mm, much better. Nice and soft. And here's the baby carrot. Same ingredient with my first night meal. Soft. Not too soft. Mm, mm, mm. Let me try the hamburger. <laughs> it's probably 
actually it's strange, but it's the plainer of the ingredients I eat. So I think I'm gonna take my next bite of hamburger with some onion. Mm -hmm. That's better. I'll be having this again from time to time. So, until tomorrow, when I depart to go home, I'll see you then. Well, it's the next morning, and I'm ready to depart. I've done most of my putting away in the travel trailer, but I've got a uh, just got a few things outside I still got to put away. So I have to get to that right now. Uh, I don't really particularly like doing it. I got to put down the canopy and put it away. Uh, put my grill away, my table, and my, and my green grass carpet. So I just better get to it. Well, I've hitched up the trailer and I've got it out of its uh, home sweet home spot for the past few days and now I'm ready to go back home and enjoy my family. I've had a great trip. You saw monsoon storms and rain in Arizona as promised and drones part de French for two. Until next time on Sam's Camping Videos, Travel Trailer Camping Journal, be safe, have fun, goodbye.